If you all would please find yourself a seat. We are about to get started with our program. As you're coming in, if you would just come as close up to the front and fill in the empty seats if you don't mind. At this time, we're going to have a musical prelude. This is Laura Corley, reporting live for The Current from Woodbine, where the town is remembering the 50th anniversary of the explosion at Viacol, in which 29 people were killed, and more than 50 were wounded.
at this time, we're going to ask that everyone will stand for the presentation of the colors. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance as well as the National Anthem. Thank you, you may be seated. At this time, we are going to have a special United States flag presentation. And we would like for Ms. Emily Gibbs to come to our front, please.
okay. Moving right along. Thank you, Ms. Gibbs. We're going to ask if Minister Matt Turner, Mark Turner will come to our front now for our invitation. Lord is my shepherd. I like nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Psalm 100 says, For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Please bow your head with me as we pray. Lord, you are good, and your love does endure forever. It is you we serve and recognize as sovereign in our lives. It is you we put all of our trust in. It is you who made us, and it is you who sustains us. So Lord, with that in mind, we pray for our president, Joe Biden. God, that you would give him wisdom and understanding to make good decisions, godly decisions. We pray for our legislative body, all of our congressmen and senators, and everyone that has legislative ability and authority. God, that they too would have wisdom, understanding, and make good decisions, godly decisions. Lord, I pray for our state government, the House of Representatives, the senators and the governor of the state of Georgia. God, that these folks also would have wisdom and make good, godly decisions. And Lord, I pray for our local officials, mayors, city councilmen, county commissioners, everyone involved that has anything to do with our life and this particular ministry that's taking place here. All of them, Lord. And God, we pray for our first responders our health care workers, and everyone that's involved in any way of protecting us and making sure that we're healthy and safe in our society. And God, I pray for our keynote speaker, Dr. Jury. As a young man, I did know him, Lord. And I pray, God, that you give him the words to speak that will encourage all of us today as we remember such a tragedy that happened 50 years ago. Lord, I pray for all those affected by this tragedy. Give them peace that passes all understanding every day in their lives. And Lord, I pray for the board of directors of the Thaikal Memorial Project that they will find favor with our state and national politicians and have the wisdom and knowledge to clearly define the goals for remembering the 29 people who lost their lives on February the 3rd, 1971. Thank you, Lord for all of your love and mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Aaron prayed this prayer over the children of Israel, and I'd like to pray this over everyone here today as we continue on with this program. In Numbers chapter 6, it says, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. God bless you. Thank you so very much, Pastor Turner. Everyone would mark your eyes at the uh
exactly like that. That's the power of prayer. Mm. I think I'm trying to do it. I think I'm trying to do it. I think I'm trying to do it. I'm 
He shouldn't have been there. You know, he lived by a cold. Tell me what it's been that way. They, they see before they come back in and saw he did six weeks before the explosion. I remember the day before he had two teeth extracted. He was in real bad pain. He was sleeping all that night. My fault. We had a job to do. And and he was the chief of the safety department. He had some reviews he had to do that day. And the casino became pretty great.
of the Lord again. Welcome peace to all of you. And to Ms. Jane Everett, whose initiative, dedication, and commitment to the many of those who perished 50 years ago and have evolved into the Five Hall Memorial Project. To you, Ms. Everett, and the committee, thank you for the honor of being a part of this momentous occasion. To everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. And so we are gathered here this morning to reflect and to remember 28 American patriots and heroes who fell on the battlefield of the Thiokol Chemical Corporation as the Lord himself offered them up as a sacrifice for their service dedication and commitment to this nation. While there were yet other patriots and heroes who were severely wounded, hurt, and disfigured, their lives and the lives of 28 families, spouses, mothers and fathers, children, cousins and friends in our community were forever changed. As we remember that astounding and devastating day 50 years ago, a time to die, a time to weep, a time to mourn, a time that brought overwhelming sadness and unbearable grief to our hearts and our spirits. Let us reflect on the blessing of the time the Almighty gave us with our patriots and our heroes, our family members, our loved ones, and our friends. They are our American patriots. They are our American heroes. They died in service to this great nation of ours, and we are grateful for their service. And as we remember them and their contribution to this country, let us remember their great sacrifice. along with your program. We had that video presentation that was done so very, very, very well. Hope triumphs by the everyday players. We did have that instrumental selection by the Lawson Ensemble. And we would like to think, thank Dr. Yvonne Johnson for her words by way of the occasion. This being the 50th year, I know that it may seem somber, it may seem sad, or seems like the weight is very heavy. Yet we do want to remember and recognize the sacrifice of life that took place on that day. So on this day, we want you to not only remember, but we want you to think about the lives, the memories, absorb what took place on that morning. At this time, we're going to have the fire chief of the Kingston Fire Department, Mr. Terry Smith, to come forth and give us a welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we can do better than that. This is a celebration of the 50th anniversary of our patrons and heroes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. To all our honored guests, distinguished guests in the audience, the family and friends, on behalf of Mayor Day and the City Council, I would like to welcome you to the city of Kingsland and also in this humble ceremony as we honor the 50th anniversary of our patrons and heroes. Again, I welcome you.
Thank you, sir. We do accept that welcome from that nice young man. At this time, we are going to have a song selection from the Ashes We Rose by Sister Stella Reader and Brother Frederick Myers. Days before, soon to be the worst Wednesday of our lives. Fifty years ago, we hugged our loved ones, kissed them as they walked out the door. Twenty-nine of them we would see no more. Building one thirty-two. Filled with laughter, the sounds of a working day. At 10.53, it was blown away. 24 lives immediately lost. Five others lay to pay the cost. Pay the cost. of a new day we rose the memories of our loved ones will never fade from the ashes we rose we lost our mothers our fathers our sisters and brothers, and it was the lives of many others. Their names 
that were in our hearts are now etched in stone. And among you bitch now stands with the maids of gold. And in there reminding us from the ashes we rose to the brightness of My opinion is that that song that was written just for that day, just for those lives, does deserve a standing ovation. That's just my opinion. They put the pen to the paper, and then they took their voices and performed. We're on a countdown now as we head towards that moment. February 3rd. Uh You may be seated. Thank you.
At this time, I would like to acknowledge there are some special people here that are seated among us. I do not have a list here with your names on it. I do not want to start calling names and miss somebody. But I want you to know that whoever you are and wherever you are sitting, we want to say thank you for coming out to sit and to celebrate with us on this 50th year anniversary. I see some faces and I know some names, but I will not call names because I do not want to miss anybody. So to all of our special dignitary people, good morning and thank you for coming to sit in with us. We are now down to the introduction of the keynote speaker and that is gonna be coming from Audie Jones Jr. And after that, we will have our keynote speaker come forth, and then I shall return. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. 
Maybe y'all need to stand up and run in place for a minute to get warm. Um, a few years ago, we had our um, occasion here, right here at the stadium. And it seemed like it was twice as cold as it is today. We had it at the auditorium and we had it at the rec center and it was perfect. My dad always told me if you're going to be dumb, you better be tough. All right. So I'd like our committee to either get tough or get away from being dumb. So I see our school board representative, our chairman. Would you mind standing, please? Ms. Jane Brown. Ms. Jane Brown, we're going to hold it. I'll put it in your hands that next year, this time, it will be held in the auditorium. That is your job. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> I see her behind the sheriff. He's laughing, but I have something for you to do, too. Um, I want to thank all of our representatives, especially uh, our delegation from St. Mary's and the effort that they put it forth to have the stage done in the city of Kingsland. And we have um, a delegation here from Fernandina Beach. Will y'all stand, please? All right. Our neighbors across the water. And you can get there two ways. The safest way is by land, but it's quicker by sea. Um, I have... Uh, the honor of introducing our speaker for today. It's a man that I've known pretty much all my life. He is, uh, to know all about him, where he's from, you have to have a, a lesson in where, in Georgia, as to where the cities and counties are located. And, Probably some of the counties and cities you probably never heard anything about. For instance, he was born he was born in Waycross, Georgia in nineteen thirty nine. He and his family moved to a community called Hoboken, Georgia. Don't rattle your brains trying to figure out where Hoboken is because I know a lot of you don't know where it is. And then at a young age he went to Vidalia, Georgia, where he graduated. And if you've ever eaten out there your onions, you should find out where it is. Um, he did his postgraduate at the University of Georgia, and he got his medical degree from the Medical College of Georgia. And Doc, I don't want to hold this against you, but my brother, Dr. Marvin Jones, graduated from the Medical College of Georgia too, so I don't know whether he built it up or tore it down. Um, he has five children, great children. He has some great children, three sons and two daughters. Well, let me back up. One of them is not so great, and I'm not going to call any names. One of the sons is not so great. I'm not going to call any names, but Martin knows who he is. Okay. He has... Can you stay with me? Okay. He has 13 grandchildren. 13 grandchildren. I think they deserve a hand. He has medical skills and expertise, and he's notarized, not, notarized all over the, the state of Georgia. He's chosen one of the top of all-time citizens in the greater Vidalia, Georgia area. He served as a professional golf association, the PGA Tour physician for 28 years and practiced medicine, medicine over half a century. And in our country, and especially in our county of Camden's worst moment, he rushed to Woodbine Thiokol Chemical Plant on February the 3rd 1971 and provided medical care to the injured thigh call workers. 
So I'd like to present Dr. Carl Morris Jury. Come on up, Doc. And before he starts speaking, I just want to let you know, um, when I asked him about this, he came to the our museum and he said, Artie, I would be honored to speak. He's the only living doctor that I know of that helped in that year. But he was so torn and so passionate about the, the cause that went on, the, the explosion, he broke down in tears. And I almost started boo-hooing with him. So he said, I don't know how long I'll speak. It may be a minute. It may be 20 minutes. And I guarantee it won't be 20 minutes because it's cold. But he said, would you be here with me just in case I break down? So Dr. Drury, tell it to us in your own words. You might want to introduce your dog. Well, this is Percy. Percy has a brother named Walker. His brother's a field trial champion. As with many who were there that day, this is hard to take. It really is. You know, I've lived practice months in a long time, over a half a century. All I ever wanted to be was a doctor. I want to be able to help people. I love person medicine. I love my business. And every though when you practice medicine that long, you see some tragedies. Really terrible. People have heart attacks and car wrecks. They get shot and they get killed. They get all sorts of cancer and all sorts of terrible things to them. All the way. The worst tragedy I saw happened 50 years ago today. Out there at Firefly. I can remember a time about a year and a half before that happened, I saw a, a really bad tragedy. And I consciously prayed that that would be the worst I'd ever seen. Of course, it wasn't. That particular tragedy uh, happened over in uh, Charlton County. A large group of people out in a tobacco field, back with Georgia on the raised cotton and tobacco to the exclusion of just about everything else. Thankfully, that's really different today. We, we grow everything around Georgia. That's, that's good. But some of you may not even be familiar with how they did that job back then, but they had tobacco barns, which were square structures. And they were real tall, and they'd pack them full of tobacco, and they would string them on sticks. They had a way to heat the barn, and it would cure the back and it turned that golden color and then it'd be ready for sale. Well, they had that barn packed with people that day when the old South Georgia thunderstorm came up. And I know you all seen storm prairie lightning is really bad. Sometimes you'll see a bolt that looks like it's a half a city block wide and just hangs there in the sky. Well, one like that hit that barn and instantly killed eight people. They brought a large group of them down to the hospital in St. Mary's where I treated them. And those people were in some ways so like the ones at Tycoon. They were stunned. They were just absolutely stunned. They were almost speechless. And that lightning and finding a way to get to ground just produced some bizarre injuries. It blew a man's fingertip off it knock shoes off of people and bore holes through shoes that burned the hair from one man's under his arm but not the other. But they uh, 
they, they were just known for the experience they had. So, back then, I was in Woodbine on that day. And naturally, it took a while to find out what it was that made all that noise and rattle the windows. And as soon as we found out, I went straight down there. We were able to quickly get as many ambulances and helicopters as we could to start sending people anywhere we could to, to give really critical care because many of those who weren't yet gone or, or were critically injured. And I took a large group of them down to the hospital in St. Mary's and I treated them there. And, um, I saw them follow up many, many times. Back then, Thiokol came to the county to uh, produce solid fuel propellant for rockets for our space program. Turned out they didn't win uh, that contract. It ended up they decided to use uh, liquid propellant. So if I called out this contract, so they had a little to fall back on to make trip flares to be used in Vietnam, a place where no American soldier ever should have died and absolutely wasted the war effort. I think a lot of people share that opinion with me. But anyway, the people working with that material were warned that it's highly flammable. They need to have our fires get up. But somebody gave them a really false hope and caused a tragedy that it shouldn't have happened. They told those people this stuff won't explode. Now be careful because they're burned. It'll burn you. But you need more of it won't explode. So when those fires would take place, most of the people thought, I get out the door, I'm safe. And I'm sure on that morning they thought if I get outside, I'm safe. And that material that wouldn't explode, rattle windows in Jacksonville and in Brunswick, and where I was in Woodbine. And it devastated so many. The lasting impression I get from that, that day, it's a rare day I don't think about it. I can see a, a rocket launch on television and I'm not going to feel a fire call. But I thought they were going to build rocket engines. But uh, it's a haunting memory and the worst of that day. And I hate to even share this with you. But it's part of the whole experience. And I think you need to hear it. I went in a building that was empty. It was quiet as a church in there. I couldn't count all the bodies laying on the floor there. Or I had covered all the There was a lot of people. It was so sad, sad, sad. And it's one I'll never forget. And I pray that God blesses all of you who've done so much keep the memory of these people alive. Some bad things happened after this. Another thing I can't explain, somehow they ended the awards to these people who suffered so it's only twelve thousand dollars. And many of these people lost the very heart of their family. They could never recover. And uh, 
seems to me like there should have been ways around that city and all that would be a world of There's a bunch of attorneys flat to come and join John Rivers and those people. And well, we all heard our lawyer stories from and some of them represent themselves a lot better than they did with family. So the tragedy later, the very core was torn out of many families. Very personal losses. But may God bless all of you who took the money and uh, built that museum. It's a, it's a wonderful place. Uh, it was hard for me to look around and see all those, those sites. But I'm thankful it's there. And thankfully we didn't have a day like this. You know, we never, ever forget these people, these saints. I want to know you. Thank you. about the jury thing. For taking us on the journey of what many people experience, the hurt, a few weeks ago, for the people that have the Facebook page, you know we put these posts up. I posted on my page that um, this past year that we've been in this pandemic and this uh, virus that's been going on, lives lost, things that have taken place. And I was speaking to the human man. If you have not shed one tear during this past year, with all the stuff that we have going on, you need to do a personal inventory. 
As I stand here this morning, and we've heard this story, a lot of us have lived this. There's no way that you cannot leave here and not have shed a tear. We had our speaker, so I'm gonna move on in the program. Some people say that you, you have a short distant memory and some people you have a long distant memory. Uh, in the booklet, if you purchase a book, I shared a little bit that I remembered that day. I was a fresh four year old. But I remember that particular day that my daddy didn't go to work. I found out later that he changed shifts with somebody. He didn't go to work. But after the shaking or whatever took place, we travel to my great grandmother's house. We get there and they're scrambling. I'm young, I'm not really sure what's going on. I later find out that my aunt, Celia Alberta, was at work and that was her building. And we, the family members, were left to tell her story because she is the first name that you'll find in the program of the lives that were lost. With that being said, at this time, I would like to recognize, this could be uh, almost everybody that's here, but I would like to recognize the family members of the ones lost. Would you please, sir, and please ma'am, stand? Fifty years later, I say I'm so sorry. It may not sound like much, may not mean much, but later, you think about it. I'm sure that it echoes from so many other people. Just so sorry. I also want to recognize the former workers of Thiok Hall. If you are here, would you please, sir, and please, ma'am, stand? I say to you, thank you. Thank you. And I also say to you, I'm sorry. Years later, the little four-year-old girl, high school, senior year, I took a job with the school program. The job was at what was formerly Thayer Call, Union Carbide. So I got a chance to experience, although I had made many trips out there with my dad to the different functions that they would have, but to be out there, to be riding around and to actually pass the spot with that building, 132 set. The thoughts and the memories that would go through your mind. At this time, I would like to ask the committee if not I will give you an opportunity to come after this now this person that I'm going to bring to your front now there's really not a main word that I could describe this lady to the best. Tell you what, I stick fire behind her name. She came back home, if you know the story, and when she came, she had fire behind her. She had a mindset that there were some things that she wanted to get done. She needed some people to help her. Miss Janie Everett, that name rings 
all across the United States now from the north to the south, the east to the west. She doesn't like to be praised or bragged on, but man, this lady, what she has done for this community, for this town, this state, for the United States, in forming this organization to bring people together to keep these people's memories alive. It takes more than a thank you, but we appreciate her. And if you do not mind, and she comes out front, would you please stand and give her a hand cap of praise, please? Good morning, everyone. I appreciate from the bottom of my heart you all coming out this morning to remember my heroes growing up in this community. I did not have to look beyond the edge of the community or the person on the sofa to find someone's life to emulate. I was proud of them. They loved me. And as the children for Woodbine Elementary sang this morning, bright like a shine, uh, diamond, they thought that we were the key to the future. And that key was learn something new every day. Education was a very big thing. Our job was to go to school and learn something new every day. And when we came home, we started our homework. And when our parents came home, the first thing they, was at, they would ask, how was your day and what did you learn new today? And we really appreciate them. They made me believe in myself and they taught me empathy and respect for others. And I love this community and I love our neighbors. On the worst day in the history of Camden County, all of our neighbors came to see about us. No one said, it's not my jurisdiction, it's not my problem. And I learned from that. And that led me to do 37 plus years of service to others. We were always taught to serve others. The people that I grew up here with and going through the thigh call explosion experience not one child went into foster care. They did everything they could. No one cared about the color of your skin or anything else. We were a close-knit community. People respected us. And 16 cities. Just imagine, without a telephone, they came to see about us. Our sheriff called them. Miss Peoples radioed and called them. And some of them that just felt the rocking of the ground, they made phone calls. The Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, everybody came forward. We love you for that. And no matter where I traveled in the world, I could look at a globe and see that the United States is surrounded mostly by water. But it's not the water that separates us from the rest of the world. It's that desire to do right. And the people that I grew up here knowing, you know, we always aspire to be that shining city on the hill. It is the spirit of the first responders from the 16 cities, the patriots of Thakal that upheld our sacred duty, that spirit is the light that keeps the city on the hill lit. And when our people came into the presence of God, they had a heart that was sealed with the commitment of the three gifts, faith, hope, and love. I will always love them. I will always remember them. And I will remember 
that Ferndina came, Jacksonville came, Brunswick was the first city in, Kingsland was the first city to go to Thigh Call that morning. Alma came 90 miles. Savannah, Savannah brought blood to Brunswick. Brunswick Hospital stood up. Waycross, Blackshell, they, people suffer, but they came anyway. They came because those people were the living words of our constitution. Those people lived for the future and they lived for each other. I will forever love them and I'm hoping and I'm praying and I'm still standing fast that the 30 people killed at Fire Call, they earned and they deserve the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the first workforce in American history where a woman could make an equal wage. It takes a lot of courage to do that. These people help man walk on the moon. These people are the people that they saved the lives of thousands of our service members by making those munitions. And if you know the Constitution, you not only raise an army and maintain a navy, you supply it. And these people supplied our military. Munitions, deterrent gas, and I have trained in that deterrent gas, experienced it at home when my mother came home. So I knew what I was dealing with. And an 81 millimeter, you can definitely send a message to the enemy. And so I won't stop. Somebody must listen. We are a grateful nation. And we want to say thank you to the workers. But we also want to form the Thigh Call Memorial National Park, where the 16 cities, the 14 hospitals, the Army, Navy, and Coast Guard can have their place in a museum, a monument, realistic for the workers, and an education center that teaches these children humanity, what it is to be human, to learn how to share, to learn how to be a human being. This is the goal. This is our teaching moment. Just as our people moved America forward, where a woman could get a job, and now you can dial 911 in Jacksonville is definitely the bold new city of the South. They brought the truth and they brought healing to America and these people deserve to be remembered and honored. And I know I'm talking a lot, but this is the 50th anniversary and I really thank you all for coming. I love you dearly. See you next year. Once again, we want to say to each of you, thank you for taking out this time of your busy schedule to come out and fellowship with us on this 50th year anniversary of February 3rd, 1971. We appreciate you. The slogan that we use at the Guy Call Memorial Building is remember, honor, and teach. We want to remember them. We want to always honor them. And we want to teach about them and that they never let February 3rd, 1971, ever be forgotten in your hearts and your minds. Thank you and consider yourselves dismissed.